Hi, what's up everyone? I am so glad to have you back on my channel and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Roshni and I am a life coach and this channel is called Beti Grew Up. It's dedicated to taking control of your mental health. I make new videos every single Sunday and I hope that I find you here again on another self-care Sunday soon. So I am just here talking about my lessons I've learned from for October. I cannot believe that it's already November. This year is going by so quickly um, and I hope that you enjoyed my past live series that I put out at the end of October. I wanted to make it special for Halloween and I'm excited to hear your feedback on it. Um, for this month I really had a lot of different lessons that I wanted to talk about and I didn't want to miss uh, talking about them so I thought I would just put out this video a little bit late. Let's just get into it. The very first lesson that I have is that your identity is actually flexible and that you should think about your identity as flexible when you are trying to make a change in yourself or that or when you're trying to um, just be a better person on your personal growth journey. Now I know that it can be really hard to change your identity and it sounds really intense but it's really as simple as just letting your own thoughts about who you are and who you should be go. And I know that this can be especially hard when something is so ingrained in us, like a lot of people that have had weight issues in their childhood, like they always feel like they're the chubby kid or they always feel like they're on the outside in some sort of way. And people who might have, you know, ideas like they're unorganized or they're always late or they're not smart. I mean, a lot of these beliefs do develop when we're really, really young. It can come from, you know, teachers or people at school or a bad home life or parents that are just kind of always excessively harsh with you. Like it could come, come from anywhere. Um, and most of the time these beliefs actually come from something called the inner critic and the inner critic is almost always based after some sort of external voice that we heard critiquing ourselves that we then felt like we had to take on and we felt like if we judge ourselves first then no one else can judge us because we've already caught ourselves or we can always get to that joke first or whatever um, and that way we can kind of protect ourselves from the pain and yes that's a good place to be in and yes it's a coping mechanism that can often help but it's not really healthy for you and it again is still just a coping mechanism for a an underlying problem and that's what you need to address so thinking of your identity as flexible will help you because instead of saying you know you are always gonna be the unorganized one or always gonna be the late one if you're okay with saying that you're parting from those things or saying that those little basic qualities don't have to define you like a whole person can't be defined by the fact that you're late but some people will just throw that in your face over and over again or will be like oh why are you on time that's so weird you should be late you're always running late or you're always scrambling to get yourself together like why are you put together this one time these are like other people's comments that also tend to get us down because we let them just like the inner critic we just let them get kind of into our own mind and into our own thoughts and we just tear ourselves down um, but allowing yourself to break free of all of that and let go of those little barriers allows you to be like actually no it makes perfect sense that I'm put together because that's the kind of person I am and even if you're still working on getting yourself there that is something that you need to tell yourself and that you need to believe with certainty so that you can actually start becoming that person. If you're not willing to let go of the ideas that you had about yourself before, then those ideas will never fully go away. Like if on some level you're saying, you know, I, I wanna be the athletic person I'm going to be, but inside you just always feel like that can never be you, then no matter how hard you try or how hard you work, you'll have these different aspects of self-sabotage or maybe your body itself will just cling on to that weight because you're not allowing yourself to fully let go. So let your identity be flexible. Don't focus on one aspect or another of your personality too much. Just say that, you know, this is what you're going to be. That's what you want to be. And that's just how it is. And that person that you were before, those habits that you want to lose are in the past. If you're stuck being a smoker, just say, I'm actually not a smoker and treat yourself like you're not one. And that will become re your reality. And that actually brings me to my second point which is kind of similar, but it's more of like on a larger scale. It's that life is as blank as you make it. And I know that I've talked a lot about your external reality being a facet of your thoughts on this channel, and that's always something that I believe in, but this was a lesson that just came to me so strongly this month, and I felt like it was just something that, it was almost like this 
instant manifestation with every little thing. Like if I was in a bad mood and I felt like I wasn't going to succeed at my job or I wasn't going to have time in my day to do everything that I wanted and that's exactly what happened and if I allowed myself to say life is as plentiful as you make it, time is as abundant as I want it to be, if I was saying those things to myself then I would have one of those days where I felt like I did a million different things and got everything done and just felt so happy and relaxed while I was doing it and I felt like it just became more and more evident and more and more instantaneous and that's the biggest thing that I want to take t and say to you guys uh, in this video is that life is literally as blank as you make it. Life is as beautiful as you make it. Life is as abundant as you make it. Life is as lacking as you make it. Life is as lonely as you make it. Life is as integrated and connected as you make it. I mean, whatever you want to see in life, you will manifest that. And it's not just about manifestation. There's also, I mean, you've all probably heard about confirmation bias, right? It's the idea that no matter what we think or what our beliefs are, as soon as we have like an idea that we hold to be true, we'll see more examples of that. You know, if we believe that our government is failing us, we'll find articles and we'll see all these examples and those things will stick out to us. And that's confirmation bias. And there's actually a pattern of thinking in our mind um, called the reticular activating system. As soon as your mind is used to looking for a certain idea and confirming it, then you will start to see that in patterns and you'll start to see that over a day and over a month and over a week. And if you keep getting all these messages that life is beautiful and that you are happy and that you're connected with other people because that's what you're telling yourself and that's what you're looking for then that's just what you're gonna see over and over again and honestly I've had this happen to me where I'm living a really similar life like not that much about my life has changed but in one mindset I'm just sitting here thinking about how much everything sucks just waiting for the next problem to fall in my lap waiting for the next car part to break down or the next thing that's going to happen that's going to cost me hundreds of dollars and it's just kind of like this a mindset where I'm I'm like thinking about what I don't have, I'm thinking about how hard life is, and that's exactly what I'm seeing. Versus my life, I'm having the exact same life, but I'm focusing on the friends that I have and the community that I have around me and the fact that I do have funds to pay for any expenses that come up and things like that. And that, even if there are expenses that come up or there are issues or things do go wrong or something is bad, I'm still looking at it through a lens of things are beautiful and it's strange that this one bad thing happened. And not only am I grateful for the bad things because it reminds me of the good things, not only does it still give me something else to be grateful for, like for example, having the funds to cover an unexpected expense, and it also just keeps me grounded by saying that, you know, I'm... I'm in control to some extent of my own experience and if I'm letting myself feel so brought down and so confused and so confined and so oppressed by everything around me, then that's me letting myself down on some level. Yes, there might be a million things in my external circumstances that aren't fair. I could either complain about it not being fair and not change anything or do what I can to change my circumstances and then break out of the situation that, yes, is completely unfair. So. I just want to encourage you to start looking at life that way a little bit more and start attracting the positive things to you because if you are focusing on the negative or you're looking for the next bad thing to happen, that's all you're going to see and that's not a fun way to live life, trust me. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is why we fall prey to our ego and as a result of the last idea that I talked about too and noticing how instantaneous things would manifest for me. I realize that I can easily bring negative things towards me as I can positive things. And what I mean by bringing negative things towards you is the idea that you can complain or you can find things to be unfair and that's when you can either act out or act out of alignment or choose to act on your ego. If you are just having the time of your life, every ounce of you is happy and just screaming for joy and you don't want this moment to be over because you're just having the time of your life. You're not worried about how to bring someone next to you down. You're not worried about what this other person is doing or how you can beat them or anything. You're just so happy and you're just so lit up and so fulfilled, right? But when we start to feel bad, when things start to not go our way, when things start to feel unfair, that's when it's important to know how you're going to react. But it goes further than that to say, 
when are you going to succumb to your ego? Because yes, we all make mistakes, we all fall prey to our ego, and at the end of the day, we're humans. And by ego, I don't just mean your self-esteem, because I think self-esteem can be a good thing, and that you should have a high self-esteem. You should be confident, because that's how people get things done. People who are worried and asking for permission all the time, and just constantly nervous and looking around them for someone to tell them what to do, they're not going to get as far, or at least be as comfortable getting that far, as someone that's confident and feels like they can earn it or that they do deserve it from the get-go. It's the same thing for someone who's looking for their ego to be fulfilled. So when you are tempted to do something bad, when you're tempted to fall out of alignment, it's because you know, you're know you worried that things aren't going your way. It's because you feel like you are owed something and it's because you feel like you deserve to not have this bad thing happened to you and none of us want bad things to happen but you still can't let yourself fall out of alignment because of something negative coming your way because if you do then you're never going to learn that lesson and you're never going to grow and in my i think it was my august lessons i learned i talked about rising to the occasion and if a problem keeps coming back to you over and over again it's probably because you haven't learned it through your higher self. Like you're just probably responding to it in different forms of ego, um, like through your ego by either being passive aggressive or by bringing someone down or by just leaving and not responding to someone. Or, you know, there's so many different things that we can do that just protect our ego and keep us from being vulnerable because we don't want to be hurt. But at the same time, if that means that you're falling out of alignment, if that means that you are doing something wrong or doing something that, you know, even if it's not a complete bad thing, you still know that you could have done better or that you should have done better there's a part of that that's just letting yourself down and because you're looking for that validation you're looking for that fulfillment somewhere you're looking for that attention and it's it's difficult um especially when you feel like you're not getting it but first of all you have to find a way to get yourself to feel validated on your own like that validation is never going to come even if you think that you know you just need validation from these three people in your life at some point you know one of those three isn't going to be in line with the other two or you know there's always going to be one thing that someone has a problem with you're never going to make everyone happy but you can make yourself happy and yes you know other relationships make us happy and getting along with people does as well but if you don't firmly stand behind your decisions, you're going to be frustrated and resentful at anyone that's telling you anything otherwise. So you need to be okay with where you are, including the problems that are coming your way. You need to find that fulfillment within yourself um, because it's never going to be there with other people. People will come and go or someone will always find something to nitpick at and it's just not worth it. It's never going to be in your control. So that's the biggest thing is to find your sense of validation within yourself. And this is a big task. Like this is not a small feat that, and it's not something that you can do overnight. And that's why I've dedicated my entire life coaching practice to developing your worthiness and your self-worth because I think it's it's genuinely, you know, one of the most important and one of the most fulfilling things, you, literally, that you will ever do. So if you are interested in a complimentary coaching session, definitely let me know. Sign up at the link down below. Um, just pick a time on my calendar. It's totally free to get to know me and talk to me um, and talk about what issues you're having with your worthiness because I would love to help you out and give you some advice. But outside of that, the other biggest thing is a mindfulness practice. Now, I know that this is thrown around a lot and everyone kind of has different definitions for it. Essentially, spiritual, a spiritual practice or a mindfulness practice or a meditation practice, it all, first of all, it's all a practice. And second of all, the root of everything is having some form of time where you just check in with yourself every day, where you're not stressed about this thing or that thing. You're not looking at your to-do list. You're not you know, just running around, you just give yourself a little bit of time every single day to check in. And it's great when it's the same thing that you do every day because you can kind of feel your anger one day. You can feel how you show up every single day and that'll help you understand your emotions. It'll help you work through them. Um, but having some sort of practice is essential uh, for not falling prey to your ego and not letting your ego get the best of you. It just gives you that patience that time to check in with, with yourself and it gives you that extra barrier like when you're checking in with yourself on a daily basis you're literally giving yourself the time to say oh I'm kind of angry today but you know what it doesn't matter because I'm just sitting here 
looking out the window, having my coffee, checking in with myself, and nothing is wrong right now. And when you give yourself that time to explore your emotions in a situation where there isn't a crisis happening, when there isn't a meltdown going on, and when you're not responsible for a bunch of things, you really allow yourself to be okay with your emotions and kind of be okay exploring that and you have more of a sense of control because you feel like you're kind of on top of your emotions. It's not like you're in the middle of a grocery store aisle having a complete breakdown because of all these things that have been bubbling up in your, inside of you for years. You're allowing that to resonate with you for a few minutes every day and that is really, really, really helpful. So I always would suggest that when it comes to falling prey to your ego and letting your ego get the best of you, but my biggest recommendation for getting into into a spiritual practice or into a mindfulness or a meditation practice is some form of movement and this has also been a huge lesson for me in October because I've been really off with my meditation practice in the last few months. I used to be so good about doing affirmations, meditation, yoga, um, and journaling every single day. And that was my morning routine for the longest time for so many months and it brought me so much joy. and. I just got so off track. Um, part of it was just being busy and traveling and moving and part of it was also just having such intense spiritual experiences that it kind of pushed me away a little bit. Like, I almost felt like I needed some time to recuperate and get back into it. Um, but because of that, I've been using yoga. And I know that, you know, a lot of people might love yoga, a lot of people might just not be for you, but that's okay. Any sort of movement, I think, is one of the best ways to get into a spiritual or a mindfulness practice. And the reason why is because it gives you a way to move your body and to spend time being focused and being in a flow with something while not thinking. I used to be a dancer for a lot of years and if dance is something that helps you relax you might be counting out the beats you might be counting to eight or, or you know you might be thinking of your next move but other than that you know you're just more focused on what your body is doing and you're focused on this expression and feeling the music and there's so much going on that you're not sitting there in your mind focused on your to-do list racking your mind for time to find X Y and Z to get done you know so giving yourself that time and that movement is a really great transition to get yourself from being busy and all over the place and kind of spread out and feeling healthy and feeling like you're getting a workout or getting some sort of movement and action in, but also then allowing your mind to relax and kind of just take a step back from everything because I'm telling you, once you find a way for your mind to just relax, like it honestly feels like it's something that you need every day, just a little bit of space, a little bit of creativity, a little bit of time to just flow and to just feel. And whether that's through yoga or martial arts or dancing or basketball or soccer or running or anything, finding an activity, I mean, even if it's coloring, and I will put up uh, my link to a blog post that I wrote about finding flow and different ways that you can do that. Um, I even talk about how you can do that with food. And then I also will put up my video um, where I talk about five free ways to deal with anxiety and I talk about how different repetitive things can help anxiety as well. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of thing, definitely check both of those sources out. The entire idea of using movement just allows you to step away from your thoughts, get into a practice of that, and then it makes meditation and actually sitting there without thinking a lot easier because you're not just jumping into it kind of cold turkey so to speak from your regular life so those are my lessons for the month of October um, I am so glad that I did this video I felt like I had so much to share and I really hope that you guys found it as helpful as I did so if you found any of these interesting or wanted to talk about what you've learned in October definitely let me hear your thoughts in the comments below other than that you know where to find me these are all the links right here if you're interested in signing up for coaching, definitely visit the description below. I love you all so much. Happy healing!